class. In order to understand what an aromatic transition state looks like, we need to understand what an aromatic compound looks like. So we are going to use Huckel's rules to figure out what an aromatic compound looks like. Now in upcoming chapters, I will go into more depth of Huckel's rules. But right now I'm just going to introduce the bare bones of it so that you can understand these pericyclic reactions. So if we take benzene for, mal for example, okay, there's our benzene molecule. There's going to be two classes of molecules that we need to be aware of. There's going to be aromatic compounds and there's going to be anti-aromatic. And I'm going to show you an example of both. Spoiler alert, benzene is a aromatic compound. So what makes an aromatic compound? There's four rules or criteria that you need to be aware of. The first rule is it needs to be cyclic. And when you look at benzene, it's a ring. If it's a ring, it's cyclic. So benzene is cyclic. Check. The second rule okay, is it has to be planar. It has to be completely flat. And when we look at benzene, every single carbon is sp2 hybridized. So it is planar. Okay. The third rule says it needs to be conjugated completely. Completely conjugated. And we see that in benzene, it goes double, single, double, single. And then the fourth rule is that when you count the pi electrons, it needs to follow this formula, 4n plus 2. Now, what we're going to use this equation for is can we use that equation and make a true statement? What do I mean by that? Well, first off, we count how many pi electrons we have in our molecule. And we have two, four, six. So we have a total of six pi electrons. And we go like that. We take the equation there in black, and then we just do an equal sign and say, how many electrons do we have? Pi electrons, though. That's to be specific. How many pi electrons? And then n is any whole integer. Whole number integer. So 0, 1, 3, and so 2, 3, and so on. Okay. You just pick an integer. That's a whole number. And if it makes the statement true, then you satisfy Huckel's rule. So if I go 4 times 0 plus 2, does that equal 6? No, it does not. Okay, so I keep trying. 4 times 1 plus 2, does that equal 6? Yes, it does. Boom, got it. So if your compound is cyclic, planar, completely conjugated, and satisfies that equation, the compound is aromatic. Okay. Now, what if we have this compound right here? Is it aromatic? Well, we just go through the questions. Is it cyclic? Yes, it is. It's a ring. So cyclic. Check. Uh, is it planar? Well, every carbon there is sp2 hybridized, so it's planar. So it's completely flat. Check. Three. The third rule says, hey, is it completely conjugated? Yes, it is. Check. And then we go 4n plus 2. How many pi electrons does this molecule have? 
to 4. We're just counting the pi electrons, so there's 4 electrons. Now we just go through, can we find an integer that makes that statement true? So I'm going to pick 0 first. 4 times 0 plus 2, does that equal 4? Nope. So I'll try 4 times 1 plus 2 equals 4. Does that equal 4? Nope. So nothing makes that statement true. So if that's what you find, what you do next is you, you use another equation, a different one, 4n. So if I go 4n equals the amount of pi electrons I have, can I find a true statement for that equation? 4 times 0 equal 4? Nope, that's not true. But what if I do 4 times 1? That right there is a true statement. If you find a true statement with this equation right there, your compound is now anti-aromatic. So that compound is not aromatic. It's anti-aromatic. And why is this so important? Because aromatic compounds are so, so stable. They're so stable that they don't react. And that is why we could use benzene as a solvent. Because it's not going to react, typically, with our uh, reaction of interest. It can be used as a solvent. Now, if we take... All those principles that we just learned, we can now apply them to the transition state and treat it just the same way. Okay. So now we're just looking at the pi electrons that are in the transition state. And if it follows the Huckel's rule, then we can have a reaction that is going to be allowed. So we are asking the question, if you take this diene plus this dienophile, will it react? Is it allowed to react? Or another way of saying, can it react? And if it can react, we say it's allowed. And the way that we figure out if it's allowed or not is if the transition state is aromatic or not. So if we take a look at our transition state here, how many pi electrons are in the transition state? 2, 4, 6. And just going through the Huckel's rules that we just went over, we know 4n plus 2 let's see. Equals six, and we can find an integer that makes that true. So that Dill's Alder reaction is allowed because its transition state is going to be aromatic. However, if we take two ethene molecules and try to do a 2 2 cycloaddition, will it work? Well, how many pi electrons are involved in the transition state? It's going to be 2, 4. So before I go through that real quick, let's just make sure we understand this again. We see a 2, 2 cycloaddition. A 2, 2 cycloaddition is talking about there's 2 pi electrons there and 2 pi electrons there. And that reaction is not allowed because when you look at the transition state, it is anti-aromatic because there are a total of four pi electrons and the only equation that makes that true is the anti-aromatic equation which is 4n. Hmm. Now is a 6 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction allowed? Shown right here. Can that be done? Well, we go through the Huckel's rules. And how many pi electrons are going to be in that transition state? 2, 4, 6, 
8. So if we try to find a statement or an integer that makes that statement true, you will find that you won't find one. There's no number that you can plug in there to make that equation true. But you can find an equation to make that true. 4 times 2 equals 8. And so this 6 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction is going to be forbidden because it would go through a anti-aromatic transition state. So that does not happen.